everybody. It's Hot Tub Happy Hour. Look who's joining me, Savannah. Hi, everyone. She Happy heard, Friday. <laughs> she heard it was uh, National Donut Day and the rumor that I was going to have donuts and coffee. So, I mean, that's what neighbors do. They hear the, <laughs> they hear the rumors around the neighborhood and they're like, I'll be over. Had to get in. <laughs> and she always has her suit with her, so you know, it's easy. So, what are we doing today? It is National Donut Day. I did have to go and get some donuts. Um, they were a little bit difficult to find in the afternoon because usually they're all fresh in the morning. <laughs> so I don't even know how old these are. They probably were made this morning. I don't know. They're Dunkin' Donuts, not my favorite, but you know, nonetheless, they have icing and jimmies on them, so I'm happy. Now, do you call them jimmies or sprinkles? Sprinkles. Sprinkles. I call them jimmies. <laughs> I said that to somebody else and they were like, jimmies, what are you talking about? It's the first time I've ever heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, jimmies, sprinkles, whatever. The, you know, the fancy stuff on the top. It's good stuff, good stuff. So, um, I was trying to decide what kind of drink I was going to make and, of course, what goes better with donuts than coffee. So I had to get my, uh, my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. And did you know, since it is National Donut Day, if you buy a drink, you get one of your donuts for free. So that was, that was like super bonus today. I'm like, yay, got my free donut today. Uh, so we're gonna make what I'm gonna call um, orange Russians with a little bit of coffee. So not your typical white Russian. We're gonna, you know, I'm gonna basically F up another bartending recipe <laughs> because it's what I do best. Um, but anyways, it's going to have al alcohol booze in it, so it'll be great. So we're going to make those. You got those ready? Yeah. Okay, I've got ice guy. in here. Get a little bit of ice going in here. Here, we'll see if we can pour some in here. Okay, here we go. Uh-oh, <laughs> that's one. That's two. Hold that. Stand by. Uh oh, we're getting coffee in the hot tub. Coffee in the hot tub, coffee in the hot tub. Okay, of course, vodka, and this is from Sonoma Brothers, local company. Love these guys, they're amazing. They're the guys that are making the hand sanitizer right now. Um, but that's okay, we're gonna drink some of their vodka, and then, of course, we're gonna need some more. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Okay, so a little bit of vodka. Whoop. A little bit for you. A little bit more for you. <laughs> She's easy to get drunk too. Benefit of the neighborhood, just a short walk. <laughs> a short, it's just a short walk. Uh, a little Kahlua. So a little uh, coffee liqueur. So we already have our coffee, but you know. We'll, we'll add a little bit more of this for our sweetness. A little bit of sweetness. There we go. One, two. Oh, good. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if this is going to be any good. It's got to be good. It's got vodka in it. <laughs> and um, we're making it the orange Russian because I'm going to put in just a little bit of Grand Marnier, a little bit of the orange liqueur. Just for fun. Just because we can. Okay. The only way to get better at this is to do it more often. So <laughs> I definitely need to practice my bartending skills. So, so here we are. <laughs> okay, we'll top it off with a little bit of... I just had milk. I didn't have real cream, so... Okay, we'll see how it is. Nice. There we get that. Put that over there. Cheers. Cheers. Give it a little swirl. Mm. Hi, John. Hi, Susan. Oh. Oh, that'll do just fine. Oh, I'm sure it'll go great with those donuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which donut do you want? I'll have the chocolate one, please. Okay, here. Did you see these lovely donuts? Dunkin' Donuts, they like look like they're fake. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. For you. You don't have to eat the whole thing. I just gotta have a bite of the strawberry one. Try not to get sprinkles in your hot tub. I know, right? No Jimmy's in the hot tub. <laughs> Unless he's a hot Jimmy. I don't know. I, I might be okay with that. Mmm. Mmm, strawberry. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if it goes with this. I know, is this entertaining? You guys are waiting for the sex trivia part, aren't you? You gotta, you gotta wade through it. Sorry. Mm. That's a hell of a pairing right there. <laughs> That's a hell of a breakfast. But <laughs> this is what I have in the afternoon. <laughs> that would be a hell. Could, oh, you know what? 
There's gonna be leftovers. That will be breakfast tomorrow. Saturday brunch. Saturday <laughs> breakfast. That's uh, perfect. I love it. Let's see. <laughs> Susan's commenting on my hair being so long with my pony. Yes, that's what happens when you don't get your hair cut for four months. Yeah. Okay, I need a floaty. Oh, here's your unicorn. Okay. Got mine. I got my booch. You got your daiquiri? Got my daiquiri. Okay. <laughs> All right, kids. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. I know. So I have to tell you, I found these little cards, right? I mean, these are actually really cool. See, they're really colorful and everything. There was, I was cleaning stuff out, obviously, and everybody's cleaning out, and you, you know, I got crap everywhere. I found a drawer full of a bunch of junk, basically. And there was this game in there, and it is literally a sex trivia game. <laughs> and I can tell you, I have never actually played it with anyone. I don't even know where it came from. I have no, no idea how long it's been in that drawer. Um, but judging by some of, some of the, uh, the questions and answers, it's, uh, it's at, least, at least 10 or 15 years old. So there you go. Uh, but we're gonna have some fun. I'm gonna do some trivia here with Savannah. And uh, you guys can play along too. Just in, your, uh, in the comments there. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Sarah. In the comments, uh, let us know which one you think is the answer. Okay. Here we go. Who, you probably aren't gonna know, you might know this, I don't know. <laughs> Who appeared on the cover of Playboy's first issue? Was it A, a cartoon bunny in a tux, B, Raquel Welch, C, Miss Kentucky, or D, Marilyn Monroe? Which one do you think, Savannah? Wasn't it Raquel? Is that, is that your, uh, your answer, B? B is my answer. Okay, B is Savannah's answer. If you guys want to play along, I know some of you know the answer to this. Who appeared on the cover of Playboy's first issue? It was actually D, Marilyn Monroe. Oh my gosh, okay. I she was on later. <laughs> well, she was on like, I don't know how many times. She must have been on the cover like, I don't know, dozens of times. So, okay, uh, Playboy's first edition came out in 1953 with Marilyn Monroe on the cover and in the centerfold. And uh, Sarah got it right, see, there you go. Uh, the famous Playboy rabbit head didn't appear until the second issue, but it has shown up in every issue since, even though there's no more Playboy magazine anymore. Uh, it, so that bunny has either been in plain sight or hidden. Uh, Hugh Hefner said he chose the furry creature for its frisky sexual connotations. Ooh, okay. And uh, yeah, like I said, there's no more Playboy magazine and there's no more Hugh Hefner. So this is how old this game is. This is an old game. <laughs> All right. But you know, sex never really gets old. So we'll just keep going. Playboy's not really going to go anywhere. Uh, yeah, anyway. right. Exactly. You're still going to know about <laughs> you, it. So, everyone's yeah. going to know what that is. Exactly. Okay. Here we go, kids. Get ready on your keyboard to answer the trivia here. Okay. In a web survey... Residents of which country were most likely to admit they'd had a one night stand? A, Italy, B, Thailand, C, United States, or D, Denmark? So, which country uh, were residents most likely to admit that they had a one night stand? Is it A, Italy, B, Thailand, C, United States, or D, Denmark? What do you think, Savannah? What are your thoughts on this? Sarah says A, Italy. Interesting. I was, I was leaning towards Italy. <clears throat> now, why would you say Italy? Um, just, just wondering. Oh, well, I've... One night stand. Italy. About... Have you been to Italy? No, I okay. haven't. I haven't. Okay. I don't know. I was just thinking Europe. I was thinking United States might be... I, I almost want to go there, but I almost think that's too too much of a no. It can't be that answer. <laughs> it can't be that obvious. I don't know. I can't, I can't be that simple. I don't know. Just Italy sounds like so, well, you know, it's a good know, guess. It's a good, good guess. All right. So uh, let's see. Residents a lot of, of wine. Which, I don't know. Yeah, a lot of good wine. A lot of good red wine. That'll get you. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Residents of which country were most likely to admit they'd had a one night stand? The answer is. Oh, and John says A. Also, he's saying Italy. The answer is D, Denmark. Oh. Ooh, the Danishes. Ooh, see, Danishes. We're having donuts <laughs> and Danishes, right? Okay. According to an international web survey of people in their 20s and 30s, conducted by the condom manufacturer Durex, the Danes have, have had the most one-nighters, 65%. They're followed by Americans and Thais, both 
54%, then Italians 36%. Uh -oh. uh, let's see, I'm, uh, this, is, uh, this is funny. Uh, okay, in terms of general horniness, says, this is what it says, the Hungarians win the prize having sex an average of 152 times each year, <laughs> far above the international average of 127. <laughs> little sex trivia for you guys today. I'm keeping it mostly clean. This is all like normal stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Good, good. The all dirty right. cards come out after the second drink. Well, we're, yeah, <laughs> we have, I have a, a huge deck of these cards and um, the, it'll be the second drink and the camera won't be rolling. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to offend anybody. Y'all, y'all have to like. If you're my close friends, you can come over and we can play, and it'll be, it'll <laughs> we'll be get the news out of the game now. <laughs> mm. Okay, here we go. Which of these animals practices monogamy? Is it A, penguin, B, platypus, C, lion, or D, horse? What do you think? That Monogamous animals. That one's penguins, I've got to say. I think, I'm a, think I think a lot of people would say penguin. I think we've kind of heard that. Uh, what, was, uh, what was it on Friends where uh, Phoebe said uh, lobster? He's your lobster. <laughs> I love that show. Okay, it is a penguin. Other animals that practice monogamy include gibbons, foxes, badgers, and mongooses. I don't know if you call them mongooses or mongai. Mongooses. <laughs> mongooses? Mongooses? I don't know. But in the animal kingdom, monogamy is the exception, not the rule. In fact, the bonobo chimpanzee are closely a uh, related primate often has sex on an hourly basis with both sexes. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> like in many other animals, penguins also engage in homosexual behavior, and giraffes, lions, and mountain sheep have group sex. Okay. Interesting. Animal planet, hot! <laughs> That's hot! Where's that special? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, that's good. I didn't mix mine up. I just got a little, a little floater of the Grand Marnier. It's really yummy. <laughs> okay, here we go. On to the next question. Uh, now, this is interesting because you have to remember when this was, uh, when these cards came out, like I said, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, the, so just think about this for half a second. The only X-rated film ever to get an Academy Award was A, Midnight Cowboy, B, Nine and a Half Weeks, C, Last Tango in Paris, or D, Personal Best. Now, Savannah, you are much younger than me. Have you heard of any of those movies? Um, yeah. Which one I have you heard I of? I think I heard of, I think Midnight Cowboy and okay. one of the other, I think Nine and a Half Weeks, Nine too. and a Half Weeks, okay. Have you seen any of those? No, I don't think so. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, I, uh, let's see, I think I, only one out of this list I've seen is Nine and a Half Weeks. All right, so uh, which one is it? A, B, C, or D? Your guess. We're gonna guess B. B, so nine and a half weeks. Okay. It was a little, it was pretty risky. Okay. Midnight Cowboys. Yeah, almost my guess. Yes. <laughs> that was your first one, right? You gotta go, with, one, go yeah. with your first, yeah, first guess. Okay. So here's where we go with, with time on this. Uh, though today it might get a mere PG rating. Midnight Cowboy was slapped with an X when first released in 1969, so 50 years ago. Uh, the movie starred Dustin Hoffman, who befriends John Voight, a down and out guy trying to make it big as a high priced gigolo in New York City. But he settles for being a less glamorous Midnight Cowboy a, or male hustler. Two years after winning Best Picture, the movie's rating was changed to R. So. We were, I was debating with, uh, with my roommate about this, and, uh, and he was like, uh, wait, I didn't realize that was an X-rated film. And I'm like, well, at the time it was, and now it's not. I so there you go. Ratings change. I, yeah, ratings totally change. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. <laughs> these, are, these are actually really funny. Okay, one of the earliest successful U.S. condom ma manufacturers was originally... A, a balloon magician, B, an amateur chemist, C, a sausage maker, or D, chewing gum inventor. Who do you think was the uh, earliest successful U.S. condom manufacturer? 
What did he originally do? Hmm. We're gonna go with the uh, with C. Gonna go see the sausage maker. Sausage maker. Anybody else want to guess? I think you guys might be on a little bit of a, a delay because I see you guys are like you're putting in your comments, and I'm like, oh, I missed it. I missed it. A balloon magician. B amateur chemist. C sausage maker. Or D chewing gum inventor. Uh, John is playing the game, and I can't. He he put up a, an answer, and I don't know. I don't know which question that was for. So uh, okay, this one is. The earliest, one of the earliest successful U.S. condom manufacturers was originally C, a sausage oh. maker. Look at that. <laughs> Might make sense. Wrapping all the sausages. Well, there you go. And so in the 1880s, 1880s, let's think about this for half a second. 1880s, New York sausage maker Julius Schmid left nothing to waste when he started using animal intestines to make condoms. Condoms had been made for centuries using animal parts, linen, and silk. That's odd. And, 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 oh my God, this, this, the writing in this is funny. And Schmid's early Jimmy hats were rather smelly and uncomfortable. <laughs> By perfecting this design, Schmid became a very wealthy man, naming his products Ramses after a fertile, non condom wearing Egyptian ruler who sired over 100 children. And, uh, John, I just got your, uh, your answer. It is C. You are correct. All right, winning. Winning. I wish I had like prizes and stuff for this game. That would be good. I don't know. I'll give you a box of condoms. <laughs> That's your prize for today. All right. Here we go. Casanova supposedly ate which aphrodisiac every morning? A, oysters. B, chocolate. C, Spanish fly. Or D, pickles. Now, my only question is, uh, as did not know that pickles were an aphrodisiac, or is that just like one I, of the answers to throw you off? I didn't know that either. Pickles? I've never heard of the pickles. I've, but, mm. I've never heard of the I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be careful about what I say. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, so what is your guess? Casanova supposedly ate which aphrodisiac every morning? I'm gonna go with Spanish fly. You're gonna go with Spanish fly. Okay. So. All right. Well, I, you know, I would, I would preferably, if I had the choice out of all of those, it would probably be B, chocolate, and I think that's what Gabriel just said because, you know, hello, chocolate in the morning. Hey, you know what? Chocolate would go <laughs> really good in this too. We should have added a little chocolate, a little chocolate, chocolate liqueur, syrup, chocolate syrup. Mm. Yeah. Chocolate drizzle. Mm. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to perfect this. This is good. All right. <laughs> So Casanova, actually, John is the winner. Oysters. Oh. This squishy food is said to be the famous seducer's morning favorite. He ate about 50 each morning. Okay, that is freaking disgusting. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm, no. I like okay. oysters. I don't know if I like them that uh, right? much. That's exactly. a lot. <laughs> I mean, you can do like a... I have friends who do like the all-you-can-eat oysters, and they can eat like, I don't know, 20 of them, but it's like... 50 every morning? Every morning? Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Spanish fly, also reputed to be an aphrodisiac, is made up of ground-up beetles and is actually highly toxic. Mm. Not very sexy. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's go to one of these. Okay, next question on our little trivia game today. Are you guys having fun? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, on average, 18 to 29 year old Americans say they have sex how many times every month? A, three times a month, B, seven times a month, C, 13 times a month, or D, 20 times a month. So on average, 18 to 29 year old, 29. you're in there, right? About 15 that, years ago. Uh, no. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, trying to like, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, think about what it was like uh, to be 18 to 29, 15 years ago. Uh, how many times a month? How many, how many times a month? A, three times, B, seven times, C, 13 times, or D, 20 times? I'm say C, 13. Say C, 13. Okay, anybody else want to weigh in? Anybody want to guess? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. Okay. Gonna go with B7. Oh, like really? 
Like, let's hope it's more, but... but right? Yeah. Let's, let's hope it's more. I don't know. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's only when we reach our 50s that the average slows slightly to four to five times each month. Uh, if you're more active on a weekly basis, you're in the lucky minority. Only 7% of Americans any age report having sex four or more times each week. That's kind of depressing. Uh, even more people claim not to have had sex for a year. 14% of men and 10% of women. John had guessed C13 and Gabriel B7. You're right on the money there, Gabriel. Okay, this is interesting. I wonder if that's any commentary on, uh, on yourself. I won't make any commentary. <laughs> I promise I won't. Uh, okay, let's see. We've only got a couple more because there were really only a handful of these cards that were appropriate. And some of these are borderline not appropriate. Okay, actually this is, oh, this is our last one, darn it. Oh, I'm having fun. We're gonna have to get, we're gonna have to get the full box out. We'll keep playing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, this is our last, our last trivia question. Okay. In the 1800s, a popular US health regimen advocated minimal sexual activity and the consumption of which of the following foods? Is it A, post cereals, B, graham crackers, C, Jack Daniels whiskey, or D, Hershey's chocolate? I think Gabriel's gonna say chocolate because we're good with the chocolate, Gabriel, right? <laughs> so this is, uh, this is in the 1800s though, remember, 1800s. Uh, US, uh, popular US health regimen advocated minimal sexual activity, how depressing, and consumption of which of the following foods? <coughs> Excuse me, Boy, I think I need mind. more. Oh, whoops. <laughs> No COVID. <laughs> no commingling with COVID. Okay, A, post cereals. B, graham crackers. C, Jack Daniels whiskey. Or D, Hershey's chocolates. What do you think? Chocolates. We're going to go chocolates. You're going to go chocolates? We're going to go chocolates. It's a good, uh, okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, let's see. B, graham crackers. You guys, uh, you guys guessed chocolate. This is really crazy. Okay, so Sylvester Graham invented the Graham cracker to be part of a bland diet designed to inhibit masturbation, which was believed to weaken men by wasting precious semen. John Kellogg's cornflakes were also created to help prevent lust and masturbation. Well, there you go. Like we, we ended on a, on a high note there, I think, or maybe a low note, I don't know, trying to inhibit all of these things. What I think is really, really funny is that uh, we took the graham cracker, you know, that bland food that's supposed to be boring and, you know, all of that stuff, but we added chocolate to it and marshmallows S'mores, and, and, and crust, marshmallows. You know. right? <laughs> oh, it's on mine. Yeah. Ooh, yay. <laughs> okay. Mm. Well, I hope you guys had fun playing a little bit of uh, trivia today. We got we got a little risque, I mean, just a little bit. It wasn't, you know, wasn't totally crazy. So uh, hopefully I didn't offend anyone, not my intention, but you know, it is sex, we are humans. That's just the way life is. So uh, thank you, Savannah, for playing uh, trivia with me. <laughs> Thanks for and, having me on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're gonna keep uh, drinking a little bit more of our, uh, our orange Russians that we made with our Dunkin' Donuts coffee and our Dunkin' Donuts. And I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. We'll see you back next week sometime. And don't forget to go to YouTube and like and subscribe to my channel. <laughs> okay, y'all. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.